Hello once again, I'm Extra Life. This is my new keyboard or MIDI controller or compact stage piano. This is a Studio Logic Numa Compact 2. Has great action and most importantly, it fits in my keyboard, or at least it does when I'm not halfway into it. However, there is one thing that has kind of been bothersome to me about it, and that has to do with these joysticks. So I thought this is a perfect opportunity to try and do a little bit of circuit bending and see if we can fix this issue. So here is the front panel of the keyboard. Uh, as you can see, I've got the kind of panel flipped up. There's this like plastic hinge in the back and it comes up like this. Uh, but you can see we can still plug it in and turn it on and use it as a piano. Over here on the left hand side, you can see the joystick unit that kind of sticks up through the panel like so. And these do your kind of traditional uh, pitch and mod wheel thing. But these are both bi-directional joysticks. So you can use pitch bend, and you can also use this as a mod wheel and this to open or close the filter. So this is great, except for the fact that this potentiometer or this joystick is spring-loaded in the X, in the Y axis, excuse me. So if you want to play with it all the way open, you can only play one-handed and you have to sit here and hold the joystick up. So it's very limiting in a sense. And it's, I don't know, am I crazy? Is this just a kind of a backwards way to do it? It seems like maybe they came up with this interface uh, and then did the software afterward and tried to kind of fit in what they could. Anyway, what I think we're gonna do is just put in a knob uh, and have a switch to toggle back and forth between the joystick and the potentiometer underneath the knob. So if we look at the circuit board here for the joysticks, you can see that we've got these little joysticks and there's some shielding on there, the little lever cap. Now near as I can tell, these are parts by C and K, uh, and all they are is a potentiometer and another potentiometer at right angles to one another. So internally, this is really just like one potentiometer at this angle and then another one like this. So all we really need to do is disconnect the potentiometer that's in the vertical axis, which is, right, so it would be this rotation, so it's this potentiometer. So we're looking at these three terminals right here. So over here we have this uh, trace on pin one that is kind of a, l a larger trace and it snakes around all these components and connects to the capacitors. So this is our high voltage input that looks like black but it should be red uh, and then next to it we have a trace which you probably can't see from where you are but it connects to the big copper pore the ground plane so this obviously is our ground connection and you can see that i've soldered a wire because i was trying to read the voltage on some of these pins earlier we know that the uh 5 volt or 3.3 volt connects to one side of the potentiometer we can see it right here and that the other side is connected to ground so all we have to do is follow this trace to see where it goes elsewhere on the PCB. And if we get in real close, I don't know if you can see this, I'll point with the end of the wire here. Uh, underneath my Sharpie mark, it actually curves around and comes to this point. So if we flip the board over, that is this end of this resistor. This is 4.7 kilo ohms. And then it jumps over to here. And then that trace snakes around up to this point here and to pin eight, or what is this, pin 10? the other end pin of this connector. So that's very convenient for us. Now this capacitor, all it's doing really is gonna be smoothing noise in the potentiometer. This is a mechanical part. There's a metal arm or wiper that moves on typically a carbon trace or a plastic trace. And obviously if there's dirt or grime in there, it can be noisy. So the capacitor just helps kind of dampen those high frequency transients. So all we need to do is take a potentiometer and wire it up so that we can switch it out from this pin here and we kind of put it in between this board and the rest of the circuit. Uh, and then we'll tap off of these ground and five volt or 3.3 volt lines to the outer two pins of the potentiometer. And that makes it a voltage divider so that when we turn it left, we get a low voltage. We turn it right, we get a higher voltage. And the actual value, the resistance of this potentiometer, this happens to be 100K. It doesn't really matter what it is when you've configured it as a voltage divider. One thing that might be important uh, is the relationship of this potentiometer to this resistor because this is 4.7K and they've probably picked that to make the scaling and the sensitivity in the middle of the range uh, feel more natural. So I will try and match this, get the closest value I have to this potentiometer and use a proportional resistor. I have built a little breadboard circuit here that should let us prototype what this is gonna look like in practice. So if we disconnect the header, put on a little header socket here so that we can stick this on the breadboard, grab this cable, and connect it to our circuit here. So what we've got here is a potentiometer and a capacitor and a resistor, which is should be the same thing as is on this circuit board. 
Uh, and then we can just swap over the connection and see if it makes the sound we like. So here's the regular joystick function. And then we can close the filter with this. Or we can swap over that connection to connect to the potentiometer we installed. We can turn the knob. We can just brighten it up and play with two hands. Great, so that works just how I like it. I think I would like to have a switch so that I can toggle back and forth between using the joystick because on some patches it would be nice to have like a filter that's, you know, spring-loaded uh, and then be able to use the pot whenever we just want to open it up and leave it there. So now we just need to figure out a way to install this. Obviously we can just kind of uh, connect on this end and then on this end with some headers. Uh, this is so small. I mean, normally I would like to have like a little pre PCB to anchor it, but this is only three components and then we'll add a switch so that's four components. I think I might just try and do like point to point wiring. I think what we should do is uh, locate it a little bit over here. There's some room on the front panel. This is where the faders go on the upgraded version. all set up here. We've got the socket on one side and the ground pin and the 5 volt pin or maybe 3.3 volts is jumpered over to these two extra pins and those two extra pins are wired to the outer lugs of this potentiometer and the center lug of the potentiometer is wired with this resistor and capacitor to this switch which is in the middle of the outermost leg of this cable. So this will plug into the main brain of the computer and this switch will toggle the main brain from receiving feedback from this potentiometer or from the joystick on the control board. And we can turn it down with this control. Nice!
Well, there you have it, a very simple circuit bend on the NUMA Compact 2 to get the filter control out to a potentiometer. Uh, not that complicated, not really adding any new functionality per se, because, you know, the, there already was a filter control, which is very inconvenient. So I'm very pleased with how this came out. It was my first time really, I think, trying to circuit bend a commercial product that I own. Um, I've made repairs and stuff like that, but this is, you know, a slightly more advanced kind of uh, modification. Before I go, I have to say a huge thanks to everyone who is supporting me over on Patreon. It really means the world to me to have your support. It means that I'm able to take the time to make and edit these videos, so thank you very much. And if you're interested in getting a little bit of bonus content and early access to all of my new videos, head over to patreon.com slash extra life and become a supporter today. Well, I think that about does it for today. I've had a ton of fun doing this and I'm having a ton of fun playing with it already. So I'm very excited to getting down to some recording and songwriting and all kinds of production with this. So thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time. <laughs>